That's an amazing uh, challenges that are being brought, but I think let's hear more from Mr. Vivek as well as Mr. Mudit from the IDEX team. domain that we have in entered through mission uh, dev space uh, in the last four years or uh, this is the fifth year uh, now this will this will be the fifth launch uh, this will be the eighth launch of uh, defense india startup challenges So IDEX was launched uh, in 2018 with the objective to bring in the MSMEs and startups um, into the space, into the defense domain. And our primary focus was to solve finite problems of the services. At the same time, we wanted these uh, startups and MSMEs to become sustainable over a period of time. And for that, it was uh, necessary that we bring them into the procurement fold as well. To this extent, a uh, lot of activity has uh, been undertaken. And uh, we can proudly say that uh, IDEX is now a part of the defense acquisition procedure, which is a Bible for uh, acquisition in India in the defense sector. But over the last six to eight months, uh, in fact, over the last one year, we, we felt that uh, the problems that were coming to us from the services and uh, lately from the pu public sector units, they were, uh, they were random to an extent. Uh, the technologies were being uh, addressed uh, randomly. So uh, we made a chart of the technologies that were being used, that were, uh, that were supposed to be used in the future. And uh, in the last six months, we realized that we need to hit the, this one particular domain, which is uh, not yet addressed in the defense, uh, in the defense sector. So uh, we've had a lot of discussion. Um, and based on that, we have come up, come up with Mission Dev Space. Few questions have come to me um, regarding what kind of changes we have brought about with this, uh, what kind of uh, new things we want to do with this. My simple answer to this is uh, we don't want to make it too complicated. We want to keep it simple. To the extent possible, this will follow the same uh, Defense India startup challenge uh, process that has been laid down over the years. And um, of course, that process, um, I'll, I'll have to credit uh, Mr. Mudit here. He has been um, one of our mentors mm -hmm. for uh, that process. Plus, uh, we also started the open challenge process. Uh, one of the questions that I have been told uh, people have been asking is whether open challenge is still applicable for uh, the mission dev space. So yes, it is very much applicable. It is always applicable. It is open 365 days a year, whether it is mission dev space or any other domain that you want to apply about. Uh, it is not that we have shut down uh, the 
the window for any other problems, you're free to uh, apply for any of them. So this is in a uh, very short, uh, I think uh, Muruji will take it forward. Thank you. Um, great to have you all here, end of a long day. But I think what our video missed out, which, which probably will catch your attention, is an amount I put on the table right now, which is an amount of uh, 100 crores. And that is just opening stakes. It's, it's uh, a place to buy our place on the table. I come to this figure from the calculation that uh, 75 challenges that we just talked about, 35 of these are under IDEX rules, 40 under make one and make two rules. 35 challenges, we usually give out two to three contracts for each challenge. So that would be something between 70 to 100 um, contracts overall, which could easily mean 150 to 200 crores, but a very conservative figure is, uh, is 100 crores. And on the upper end, it could go up to as much as 300 crores. So what is that figure? That 300 crores is available for any of you who are a registered startup or a registered MSME to innovate for defense space applications. And the, the list is available on our website. And usually I say this is just opening stakes. It's just our, our way to buy our way to the table on, it's, it's post Diwali, so I can use some, some cards analogies. This is the money we use to buy a seat on the table, but there is the, the big pot of defense procurement. And uh, we are already seeing almost 16 cases of procurement from previous defense uh, challenges, defense India space challenges, uh, defense India startup challenges in the last three and a half years. Almost 120 odd contracts have been given out of which 16 have converted into procurement orders in various steps so that they are in various processes. So that is the opportunity at this point. And uh, you look at the challenges, they are everything from radars to remote sensing to um, KU band radios and a lot of other applications, a large number of which go across electronics and, and uh, material science, which is fundamentally dual use in, in its nature, right? So think of it as the government through IDEX giving you startups and MSMEs money to innovate, design new products, design them as per the requirements of your users, Navy, Army, Air Force, and a few other users, and also use that money to develop your own products which can go across other applications. So that's the broad crux of what we're doing here. But can I get a sense of how many startups and MSMEs, I mean, how many of you think you are startups and MSMEs? It doesn't have to be registered yet. That's a fair number, but that I think is the answer. I see about eight or nine hands, but that answer is, that's the reason why I'm here. I would ideally have liked this, now the number of hands to be closer to 80 or 90 rather than eight or nine because we believe that the Indian space industry is still at a very nascent stage, and I'm very happy if you tell me that's wrong and it's a mature industry. But maybe at least the defense space industry is fairly nascent. And we think of the defense uh, def space challenges, disc eight. This is the eighth iteration of Defense India Space Challenges, smart startup challenges, eighth iteration, and we believe this is a trigger to build India's space industry for the future. In these 75, you'll see we've covered everything from launch and quick launch systems to TTC, uh, telemetry and tracking. We have earth observation, we have remote sensing, we have SATCOM, I think all major aspects are covered. And there's money on the table, there's also uh, the pot of defense procurement. So we hope and expect that the next time we do this kind of a round of uh, outreach, maybe there'll be a lot more hands in the, in the audience but also hopefully some of you will find partners to apply with because this is limited to startups and registered MSMEs, not uh, larger than that. And we want, and, we, and, and I can close with the figure I had in mind again, 100 to 300 crores on the table to be dispersed in the next two years to be committed in the next three months. Thank you. One point here uh, that uh, I would like to cover is, uh, this is not, uh, just IDEX baby. Um, all the stakeholders, the relevant stakeholders, and uh, the relevant stakeholders always means including the end users, are a part of uh, what we are doing. 
So all the disks that have been launched till now and have reached the stage of uh, completion, right from the stage of deciding the problem statements to uh, selection of the winners and handholding of the winners throughout the process of prototype development and the testing process. Uh, the services have uh, been at the forefront. And I must mention trials and testing especially because uh, a lot of startups, when they build their uh, uh, the budget, uh, they give us their budget, they keep about 70 to 80% for development and about 20% for testing. In defense, it doesn't work this way because uh, the testing is uh, very uh, comprehensive. It takes time. There's a lot of uh, infra that is required and a lot of patience is also required. So it is kind of 50-50 when, when it comes to defense. Uh, but I'm happy to state uh, that in the last six to eight months, uh, as uh, Mr. Mudit also mentioned, we have completed uh, the testing of uh, about 14 to 15 cases where uh, uh, RFPs have been uh, floated to IDEX winners. And services have, uh, have contributed greatly in that, I must say that. Uh, even in mission dev space, uh, over the last six months, uh, their contribution in deciding the problem statements has been very critical. Um, they have at least internally worked out what kind of quantities they'll be, uh, they'll be requiring or projecting when it comes to procurement. But it is still uh, some time for that because uh, we have to first go through the process of selection and development of prototypes. So that will take some time. Perhaps, you know, I can come with this maybe one question to you. <clears throat> Anything in the defense on the space? Normally, you know, the testing time is much longer. The cycle itself is much longer, both for QT and EAT. Now, you're talking about a product as a whole in the sense is a satellite as a whole in this area, or you're talking about only payloads or something else onto that. If it is a satellite as a whole, what are the kind of time clamps that you are putting into it? Because there's another one, something circulating around is something about, you know, one year something has to happen, etc. There's another thing is being circulated now. I think it does, not, it does not come up on the IDEX. So uh, there are IDEX and make to both procedures are applicable here in uh, mission dev space. And uh, make one and make two do take a longer time. So that provision is always there with make one, make two. In IDEX two, as I said earlier, uh, the problems that we shared in disk one and disk two, we expected them to be finite. And so we expected uh, the time taken to be about 18 to 24 months. But we do have cases where we have contracts for longer period. And uh, if there is justification, we'll definitely go for a longer period in uh, IDEX cases also. Do you expect numbers also more in future? Suppose uh, a prototype is developed, everything accept accepted. Do you expect more numbers in future? Of Orders from the- Of the challenges? No, no, I'm talking about suppose. A, a particular type of satellite is a challenge now. That is developed. Okay, you paid for that. That's the end of the matter. Is that the end of the matter, or are going to be, you know, numbers are going to be more in future? You mean procurement? Procurement. Of course, of course. Procurement is what we are looking at at the end of this process. We do not want to leave the startup stranded at the end of the process. We want them to turn around quickly after that. Good. You see, there's the, the going to be more numbers. I mean, that's yes, going yes, to be that that more is our basic Yes, yes. So this is Thank not a procurement contract right now. If you get a Defense India Startup Challenge grant, a SPA grant, that is a grant to develop a prototype. The procurement process kicks in later. There is, of course, acceleration because of being part of uh, DISC, but the procurement, uh, the size and MOQs will be a different uh, transaction altogether. Back, you know, we are. Somebody like me, you know, I'm just talking about on behalf of other industries too. We have been part of the, let's say, like the research organization, like DIDO, et cetera. We develop a prototype, we test it, QT, the flown, missile is flown, everything is all right. But there's no guarantee that there are going to be more numbers in future, except, you know, maybe something like uh, Akash missile and one or two other missiles. 
then what is happening is the effort that we put for developing the prototype, we're happy that we're paid for it. But future, not known. I think that kind of a scenario is existing in this also, the interest will get reduced. That's all the point I'm trying to make on that. No, that is not the case here. Um, we are not like typical uh, R&D schemes where we give the grants, get the product uh, developed, and uh, that is the end. No. Um, if a problem is uh, featured in the IDEX uh, disk, or even through open challenge, if we accept a problem statement, once the prototype is developed successfully, uh, the RFP, the tender for that uh, procurement of that item is uh, solely for the developer of the product through the IDEX process. And there may be multiple developers, but it is restricted to them. And we have cases of uh, single as well as multi-vendor uh, situations arising out of IDEX once the prototype has been successfully developed, but restricted to them. Any questions, clarifications? Hello, I am Commodore Jena. I have worked in this particular area for development of product, the products for the defense uh, through the Indian industry. The challenge, uh, what uh, Mr. Rao was bringing in is that we develop the product, okay? Thereafter, if we, they don't get in subsequent orders, then invariably many of them will die out. So for that, uh, what was done, which is accepted, the practiced in the defense uh, uh, pro production uh, department, is that at least two orders, next two orders will be given through you. Which you have initiated, you are the person or you are the entity who has interfaced with him and you have given the order. But unless you back with two more orders, so you will not be able to penetrate. Because getting a defense contract is not that easy. And once you get in, it's getting out is also not that easy. Okay, either way it is difficult. So, but to make the startup, the process easy, you must have minimum at least to, which was prevailing earlier, but I believe that has been stopped. Can you comment on this, and can you do something about this so that the startup gets encouraged to uh, get into this system? So you are well aware of the uh, of how the products work in defense and how the subsequent orders uh, come in. So once uh, a product is accepted by the services they generally like to continue with the same product in the subsequent orders also. Unlike civil market, it is, it is a tendency here and it is very natural. So we are assuring of the first uh, order once the prototype is developed. Uh, there is no reason why the services will go for any other product once, uh, once they've accepted one product here. They like to uh, replicate the same in their other uh, regiments and other uh, uh, units also. So, if I can add add some context to this question and I think uh, maybe explain how we think about it. Um, the question is, if there is a product being developed for the armed services through this process, what is the assurance of multiple procurement orders? Let me start with the with the background information that sometimes we get very early stage applicants, which are basically two boys or, or two graduate students and an idea, or maybe a professor and a graduate student from an IIT who have an idea, and basically a, an advanced, an applied science, not even technology, leave aside a prototype or a product. So the, the grant de-risks that development process. We want those engineers, those young technologists to be able to build a business around this grant. And I believe that the route to procurement is fairly certain if your science or your technology is getting converted into a product. But we are very happy, and, and it, it is actually a point of confidence for our team that the product goes through another very rigorous level of scrutiny by the armed services. 
if you c provide a committed procurement order when it's basically two students and an idea, you are putting your soldiers, sailors, and airmen at a lot of risk. There is no way that a grant process, which is supporting very early stage ideas, can be given a procurement assurance for two, three years down the line. That is just not practical. We are hopeful that within the two year process that it takes to develop a product out of a technology or a prototype out of a science, the business will also develop the knowledge of how to navigate the procurement system for the longer term. We are not setting them up to be acquired by the majors. We are also not setting them up to become majors from day one. They will have to, most of us here probably appeared for the IIT exam. You appeared for the, your JE, but you also appeared for every semester exam and you yet again appeared for your final exams. All of those exams are important for you to become a, a trusted engineer. So we are very confident that you don't give a lead developer's role to a JE aspirant. When you pass JE, that is just the first test, there are multiple tests. I don't give a career trajectory to a JE aspirant on day one. So we are very confident that this process works. It will bring that rigor which is required to make sure that we are not developing just science projects, but actually companies around it. So that may not be an answer you are looking for, but that's the answer we are confident of. Um, hi, uh, this is Arin from InSpace City. Uh, incidentally, I'm a professor at IIT Bombay. So a lot of the points are relevant. Yeah. Uh, the, the point I wanted to understand is that uh, in space, for example, um, developing the product and testing it yeah, are equally important, or maybe testing and uh, you know, quality assurance is more important than the development part. So that is where uh, I don't know if IDEX is doing anything to tie up with the established companies. So it, it goes back to uh, Anand Technologies, uh, let's say data patterns, ISRO as a whole, in order to do this testing uh, towards the product development. right? So. Is there a framework in which after development we can test uh, with established facilities? If you see the trajectory that IDEX has taken, we have uh, evolved, learned over a period of time. Even for the other projects, the Army projects, uh, what QA standards have to be taken, uh, everything has been uh, learned and uh, navigated through as we went along. We realized that in this sector, the same testing, the same processes, the procedures that we have of our uh, old institutions may not work. Uh, we have kept uh, ISRO and DRDO in the loop uh, over the launch of uh, the mission dev space, and we have been assured of uh, all kinds of support. Even in, pro even in the technologies where they are already working, We've been told, yes, you should go for the private sector to also pitch in with their approach towards getting those solutions using different technologies. And uh, we have been assured of all support. So if there is any institutional mechanisms that we have to follow to get uh, the testing done through them, so be it, we'll do that, definitely. And we'll support it. It is not just uh, a process that we'll finish by signing and uh, tell the startup that now you're free to go and do your testing. Yeah. We'll support them throughout that process also because there are uh, different challenges that they'll face. Some of them even uh, we may not know what kind of challenges they'll uh, face at that time. So we're going to handhold them all throughout the process. It is not uh, the success. It is not that uh, they are only looking for that success. We are equally hungry uh, for that successful product. Krithi Upadhyay, uh, so sorry, but I'm gonna go back to the procurement for a second there. Um, as you know, technology evolves really quickly and procurement cycles can be long and arduous. What role, if any, can IDEX play in reducing this procurement cycle? Um, secondly, you know, fine, you get the procurement, you get an order. The next step, the MOQ. How do you get the financing for that, especially for a startup? Uh, because what you're doing is a grant. Uh, what role, if any, and in the future, can IDEX play in providing the financing for fulfilling the MOQs and the end order? 
And thirdly, you know, um, I'm Washington DC based, done a lot of work on the Quad. As you know, there's a STEM fellowship that uh, the Quad is pursuing. Um, are you thinking of doing something similar within the space uh, since, you know, remote sensing for the Indo-Pacific, maritime security can be areas where all four countries um, have common objectives? Thank you, and thanks for your, all your great work in IDEX. Okay, your first question about uh, the duration of the procurement cycle. So, see the first challenge was to introduce IDEX in the procurement cycle itself, in the procurement process itself. So that was done uh, in 2020. Then we realized as we got into uh, the, the final stages of the first product uh, getting ready, we realized that the procurement itself will take about 24 months. So our next step was uh, to get that period reduced. And now we have linked every stage from the development to the procurement, every stage, uh, how much time for the trials, how much time for the reporting, because reporting also takes a lot of time. So the actual period has now been reduced from uh, 24 months to about five to six weeks once the prototype is successfully developed. So five to six months, uh, is a pretty reasonable period for procurement. So on the second question on financing for, uh, I think manufacturing, basically the, the growth stage equity. Um, two parts to that answer. One, the two fundamental objectives of IDEX were one, to create a defense industrial base for India, and two, have a co-creation model where the users, the soldiers, sailors, Amun, can, can share their uh, problem statements, can share their challenges, which can be developed with startups. Um, for that, we use the instrument of giving grants and support during both design and then procurement, but we believe that the both the banking and the venture industries, venture capital industries are fairly strong enough and we're already seeing evidence of that. Uh, more than I think seven or eight companies have received uh, venture investments um, from various funds. Even when they are still in the stage of uh, procurement or still haven't finished their milestones to get the entire grant. So we're very confident that the growth stage equity is coming in. On the debt, we've had multiple interactions with the banks and companies and we don't keep track of which company is raising debt, but we are seeing an increasing amount of interest from banks, especially the big ones, when they come into deep tech. Now, that's not an area that Indian banks understand very well, but it's the beginning of a journey, so we are starting to see that. The final question about the quad was, I think, a comment. Happy to take it offline and share ideas. Haven't thought about that much at all. Maybe this time, uh, mentioned about the MOQ also, am I right? MOQ over the components or whatever? Yeah. MOQ is part of the procurement. It's not always publicized, but we take a challenge into the system only when we see an MOQ from the services. So uh, my name is Ravi Alawadi. Two things which came up common, what Dr. Rao said and what Dr. Jana said. One, the time it takes for the prototype development because the time taken by the defense is pretty long. Second one is the, the certainty whether they'll get the order or will not get the order. I think as a businessman, that's a quite a natural expectation. My question is whether you are restricting the number of people who are given a chance to develop a prototype to five or six maximum so that at least the probability factor of getting the order increases. If you make an open game for 50 people, then you can imagine half of the people will die itself of this competition. So that actually six is the maximum we will take in any challenge. Not more than six grant winners for any challenge. But I don't think we've found six for any of them. We mostly get two or three grant winners because the scrutiny process is very rigorous. And it's usually the, the selection committee is chaired by a two-star officer from the relevant service. <laughs> There is usually an academic from one of the IITs on the committee. There are usually a couple of other officers. So on the contrary, 
it's never open to 50. We haven't had a single case in almost um, 50 odd challenges now where we've had more than three winners. It just doesn't, I mean, we just don't find enough people. So it's by far very different. Six is the maximum that we've put in the guidelines, but not a single case of six. I think fi fi there's one for five. See for yeah. yeah, but practically we do not get more than two or three uh, winners who are, and uh, in one or two cases where we found uh, a single individual innovator who wanted to do it, but he couldn't quite do it himself. So we tried to club them together so that they synergize and the probability of a solution is much higher. And that also helps you uh, in the question that you asked. Hello. Uh, sorry, this is not a uh, question. This is not a question, but I think this is, I'm passing on the, my experience uh, as an advisor to you. Okay, I have done this taken the defense production in a particular establishment from 40 crores a year to 200 crores a year in five years' time. Okay, my learning, very hard learning has been, unless you handhold that industry for the next subsequent two, three orders, till the time he seamlessly get into the system, you are going to create a lot of, uh, say, bad feeling amongst the industry so that you will not get, now you are saying you are getting one or two, you may not get anybody. This has happened, but if you handhold, and he gets through the uh, defense, gets into the international orders, they really excel. I mean, it has been, I'll share in a case, case study, where one particular small scale industry in, from Ahmedabad, created Yokohama vendors for, uh, based on a Japanese technology and supplied uh, to defense, Indian defense, for the ships, where the birthing takes place. And they, they contested after we handled them for two, three orders, he established his process because when he comes initially, he's totally ignorant. He doesn't know how much, it, how much painful it is to test, when it fails and all those things. And how the orders are very intermittent whenever it will not come for a few years, then he will die. So, but to con continue the process, we handled him for two, three orders. Then after that, he got into the European market and they have beaten same Yokohama from whom they have taken the order. And now they are excelling in the ex uh, global market. So unless you create some success cases like this and develop and learning out of this, how to take this thing, seamlessly integrate with the defense market, it will be, I think you will have a hard time. Thank you. Thank you for that input and point well taken. Um, Handholding for one person can become favoritism for the another, right? So we have to have a very clear line that we're handholding, but I'm very proud of the knowledge that is shared by edX. Very frequently we have knowledge sharing sessions within startups. We have a couple of people who've sp spoken to both the edX team and the edX startups on how the US procurement works, we do a lot of sessions on the procurement system. A lot of knowledge within the IDEX system companies gets shared um, across design, across um, engineering, a lot of knowledge gets shared. And the amount of opportunities that IDEX startups get, I think within the last five months, I've probably seen five, six countries, 15, 15 countries representatives who visited IDEX startups in India. And uh, several of them are in discussions for procurement. They get privileged place at Def Expo and other, other uh, expos. So there's a lot of exposure, there's a lot of knowledge sharing, but everything being equal for every grant winner. So we want to be very far away from the line dividing uh, handholding and favoritism, but I'm very proud of the handholding that the system is providing to the companies, especially the startups, because for them, the language of procurement is a very alien language the language of government is very alien, alien. So helping them understand the process, we've had talks, we've had lectures, they also share knowledge. So that system is evolving, but it will not be handholding for each company in a specific purpose. That, that crosses the line for us. So I'll add on to this. Uh, now the investment scenario is uh, very lively and uh, investors like to have uh, uh, have access to um, companies who have actually won any kind of contracts. So I do not see or 
mostly I do not hope that such kind of situation arises for a, for a firm who actually gets even one order. Apart from this, uh, in just last one year, uh, one of our startups has already got a repeat order from the services. The others are getting orders from multiple services. So I think they'll uh, spread their tentacles enough to keep them assured of uh, not getting, not going the uh, down way. I think it should be okay for them. Um, sir, uh, this is Parag Jyoti. I had two questions. One is during the course of uh, development, a lot of uh, strategically critical innovations would have happened. Right? So who uh, has the IP rights? That is question number one. Number two is, uh, are there any export regulations with regard to these uh, innovations? Like, uh, in order to ensure that uh, only uh, the nation is using those uh, innovations and not other countries. I'll take the IP question. Uh, very proud to say that uh, from the very basic design of IDEX, and then it had a subsequent evolution, we yeah. took it as a matter of principle that the IP will be owned by the entrepreneurs, by the company which is getting the applicant, by the getting the grant, except in exceptional situations, which is basically wartime, where emergency, I mean, once you have emergency powers in act. And even then there is a provision for compensation capped at some amount, but by design, by principle, by conviction, we want the IP to be owned by the company. Does that mean that the IP company can be acquired, it can be, yes, all of that, but we also actively discourage that. So if there are companies which are developing IP to only get acquired, and we've had a recent case about that question, we, I mean, there's nothing we can do legally. But I will push back hard and tell you why not to do that. We want 100 unicorns in defense by 2030. This is not just about the next two years. So we also want our startups to think longer term, and they can think longer term only when they own the IP. So very confident, by, and by conviction, we let them own the IP, except for wartime situations and the export question. So we are already encouraging uh, applications and solutions which have uh, use in the civil as well as military domain. And when, when it comes to export, uh, you realize that uh, any country would like to take a solution which has been at least uh, accepted by the host country. So we are consciously trying to highlight and uh, certify products which uh, our services are accepting. Also, any other product which has been uh, accepted, though not introduced within uh, our services, like uh, the one who loses out on the, as the L2 or L3, where a multi-vendor situation comes up, so we are trying to get them also the right certification so that when they go out, they are able to sell their products. Additionally, uh, the defense attaches, we have defense attaches all over the world. So they have been empowered, or uh, rather they have been uh, asked to do, uh, to give uh, at least uh, decent marketing to all products, uh, not just IDEX, but uh, of the PSUs and other private companies also. It is not just a specific thing for IDEX. So all kinds of marketing uh, tactics are being used. Uh, as uh, Mudaji mentioned, uh, 15 countries have, uh, have sent their reps and they have visited us. So it is not just us that we are doing this. Uh, it is the government which is encouraging them and uh, connecting us with them. So there is a conscious effort that exports do take place. But it is a process and uh, it takes time to get established. C certification is when uh, the prototype is successfully cleared. So, so there will be different agencies, not just DGQ. Uh, DGQ will apply on land systems. Uh, AQA will come in for aero products and uh, so dev space, yeah, dev space is uh, yet to sink in, but uh, we'll have uh, ISRO mainly to help us there. Thank you very much for all the wonderful questions that we got. And I would like to thank Mr. Vivek, Mr. Mudit, as well as Dr. Subarao for joining us and answering all those questions. Thank you very much.